Hey, what's up guys? It's your boy, the independent variable and Demon Souls is full of weapons. You have regular swords, big swords, miniature swords, wooden swords, and even a fish hook. But unfortunately, the extra stick of butter I keep in hand has melted and now I'm unable to grip any of these swords reliably. But fortunately, God gave us all a nice pair of meat swords attached to our body and that's all I'll need. Also, I'll give you a firm handshake if you can guess who I created and your only hint is that he is one of the greatest boxers of our generation. Now, the amount of damage my fists are doing to the weakest enemies in the game is a little bit concerning, but I have to admit that the backstab animation is super satisfying and I never got tired of it. Still chock full of confidence, I make my way through the first castle area and it was quite relaxing just backstabbing every guy I saw while I made my way through the level, only dying one time on the way because I couldn't stop laughing at these guys falling off the stairs, only to fall off the stairs myself and join them at the bottom. Then I just have to make my way across this bridge, protected by a dragon who for some reason does not actually breathe fire, but just opens his mouth a little and exposes is his unbrushed teeth. I about lost my mind when my only friend here watched me take out all of these guys by myself, only to join me at the very end just to act like he helped. You are a worthless, bitch ass nigga. Your life literally is as valuable as a summer ant. You're gonna stay on my dick until you die. You serve no purpose in life. You should kill yourself now. Now I imagine a lot of you have never actually played Demon Souls because you don't have a PS quintuple and you weren't one of the five people to play it on the PS triple. But the first boss could either be extremely easy or one of the hardest in the game, depending on your build. And as you can probably guess, bare fists are not one of the good builds. It took a solid 15 to 20 minutes of running circles around all these goopy shield guys while they constantly throw spears at me. And as you can see, even unleashing my entire stamina bar on one of these gentlemen is not enough to actually kill one. And you may be thinking, why not just kill a few to make an opening and then whittle the boss down the rest of the way. But you foolishly forget that half the bosses in this game regenerate health. And you guessed it, buddy, this is one of them. So after I painfully take out about 90% of them, I can finally start wailing on the actual boss. And at this point, it was pretty smooth sailing. And once he was finished, I used my funds to pump myself full of steroids because this is the only way to increase your fist damage. And now I'm headed for the next boss. And conveniently, he's just across a single bridge that only has a dragon, about 30 archers, some undead knights, and a pack of dogs guarding it, so just your average day in Ohio. And once I make it to the tower night, the first thing I have to do is take out all these archers, which wouldn't be that hard, except I skipped out on my protein shake this morning, so I don't do enough damage before I knock them off, and I end up having to fight them all at the same time later in the fight. The tower knight himself literally has an Achilles heel, well actually two of them, so I take turns biting at his ankles like a rabid chihuahua until they start spraying a bunch of blue ghost mist stuff or whatever that is. And after you've obliterated his ankles, he'll take a nice nap, and that's when you can punch him in the head for big damage. He has a few AoE attacks, but he's extremely slow, so getting in there and getting a few 1-2 combos off and running away isn't too difficult. And after about two more naps, he takes one more forever nap, and I've decided I am sick of looking at this castle, so I head to the next world. And the thing about Demon Souls is, they have a lot of areas where they basically make it impossible to just run through the level without killing some enemies, and this is one of those areas. So now I'm forced to painfully and slowly take out some of these enemies one by one so they'll stop standing in the middle of the hallway like a big old jerk. And due to that, it takes much longer than expected to make it to the Armored Spider, which was my nickname in high school. Just kidding, because that doesn't make any sense. And as much as I don't want to, you have to stand right in front of him to be effective in this fight, and you have to dodge his fireballs and butt slime and wait for one specific attack. And you'll always know it's coming, because he starts it off with a couple swipes that are easy to dodge, and then he slams down, leaving him exposed for a couple knuckle sandwiches. And after that, he'll always start spitting gallons of oil everywhere, and instead of selling it to the United States for big bands and hella profit, he decides to set it on fire. Fire. And unfortunately, I'm not a firefighter, so I have to run to the back of the room and wait it out and then get back in his face and rinse and repeat that process for about 10 to 15 minutes. Now that my buns have been thoroughly toasted, I think it's time to cool off, so I head to the storm area where it never stops raining. And I was actually surprised by the amount of damage I was doing to the bony boys here, but the more important thing is, I noticed that I could headbutt people, and that's just an amazing addition. They didn't have to do that, but they did that for us. And if you would like to see a headbutt only run, just comment the 2009 film jumper was actually kind of good with a nuanced main character and really cool special effects and the 15% on Rotten Tomatoes seems just a little harsh. And also the Vanguard Demon is back for a rematch and it was actually a pretty good time. If a good time to you is getting constantly shot off screen by enemies you can't kill because your arms are not 200 feet long to punch them in their stupid faces. And I actually don't have to kill him because he's technically not a boss because he has no boss health bar but I did this for you because I kind of like like you a lot. 
check this box if you like me too. And the worst part about this fight is you can't even bait him over here to avoid getting shot because he refuses to move more than a few feet away from his original position, even if I lay down a non-conspicuous trail of Skittles, which are his favorite. It once again takes a very long time, but I got the job done. And at this point, I was very desperate to increase my damage in any way possible and found out about a ring that increases your damage by 50%, but only if your health is lower than 30%. So I immediately head out to go get that and take a voluntary trip to prison this time. And unlike the last time, I'm not locked up for tax fraud. So I just run around beating up a bunch of squilliams. Some crackhead chases me around begging for souls. I absolutely bust this man's jaw with the cleanest uppercut. And then I use this free punching bag that's just hanging here for anyone to practice on. Oh boy, I sure do hope the ring I'm looking for is not right in front of that giant arrow throwing machine. And with that, I head back to the storm area where they summon a bunch of spooky ghosts covered in spooky ghost cum. And then I find some random bald dude hanging out in this room and his face is just so damn disgusting when he talks that I have to beat the absolute piss out of him. And getting to the next boss was not an easy task because this is another area where it's almost impossible to run around the enemies without fighting them and I'm getting shot from the sky. And after about 20 attempts, I finally gather the strength to get lucky enough for them both to fall off. And now I can safely run past the rest of the enemies into this room where another enemy is blocking the stairs and then shoots me with a death beam and i get a nice visit from the skeletons i just ran past and these dudes have an absolute ton of health so fighting them is not an option so i just have to awkwardly shuffle around them while saying oh let me just squeeze past you here and since i have a deep hatred for blind people because i think they're faking it i take much pride in taking out this next boss who happens to be blind i hurt myself enough beforehand to get the attack boost and spend the next 10 to 15 minutes slowly walking behind this guy waiting for him to attack nothing and then run up on him and punch him right in his ankles you you don't actually have to wait for him to slam his weapon first, but the hitboxes are a little janky and seem to work a little bit better after he attacks. And for some reason, he has a tiny chance of just randomly spinning around and charging at you, which only happened once, but it scared the absolute shit out of me. After I take him out, I head back to roll my way through a bunch of arrows, and before I can fight the next boss, I find a gentleman who tells me he's not doing anything malicious, and I do believe him, but unfortunately, he is bald, so I must take him out of the gene pool. With him out of the way, I can start the next boss fight, which was another tough one. My main issue is I was too stubborn to just go in with a full health bar because I wanted the damage boost and this boss lays a bunch of invisible traps everywhere that'll either kill me on their own or stun me long enough to get shot by one of the bosses. It seems a lot less likely that the traps are on the side of the arena, so that's where I stick to, and your best bet is just to find the main boss as fast as possible and immediately start punching her in the face. Because as soon as you do damage to the main boss, the other ones will stop shooting at you and you can do a nice chunk of damage. The damage boosting ring definitely helps and this would have taken way way longer without it, but I also died a few times because my health was so low, so I don't know if I actually saved any time in the long run. After that, I get kidnapped and taken to Epstein's Island before I quickly escape and head on over to the Poop Swamp area. And getting through here is a nightmare because you could fall off the sides at any minute, so I have to kill mostly everybody on the way, and I find this old lady who attempts to hustle me for some grass for 2,000 souls, and when I politely decline her offer, she says this and I simply could not contain myself. And not even the ability of flight will save you from my fists. Oh, fell in the poop swamp. After that section, I was able to just run my way to the boss, and this was one where I had to balance being on the brink of death the whole time while I was constantly losing health in order to get the attack boost. But once again, it was completely necessary because it makes it go so much faster. And he's not even that hard, you're just constantly taking damage, and if you stay behind him, he'll usually only do two or three moves that are pretty easy to avoid. Then you can just punch him in the spine and roll away whenever he does his explosion attack. I was able to get through the first 75% of the fight at low health, but I got a little nervous at the end because I had a couple close calls and ended up fully healing myself. And yippee, because the next boss is right through the hole in the wall, but unfortunately, I have to get past her goon, which was extremely difficult. At least that's what I would say if I was a normal player that could not parry this man to death with ease. Okay, that was a lie. I died about 20 times trying to parry him to death, and the only reason I finally got past it is because I realized if you punch him as he's getting back up, he'll almost always do the exact same attack again because if you don't he likes to run to the back of the arena into the blood swamp and if you stand in that area for too long it'll hurt you and he'll switch to a two-handed stance and he now attacks twice as fast and it's just not a good time and once i was able to parry him a few times the game just could not handle my skill and began to collapse in on itself once i was finally able to make it past him all you have to do to beat the real boss is just talk to her and she'll immediately disappear into the ether never to be seen again just like most of the girls i talk to in real life now i could head back to the fire area and you might not know that the these ledges are made of solid butter, which is why you slip off of them so goddamn easily. It's like that, is this thing real or is it cake? 
Except now it's, is the structural integrity of this mine shaft made of wood or butter? And the answer is butter. I make it to the flame lurker, but he's more like the lame flurker. Am I right? But no, this fight was awful. First off, there's lava everywhere. And if you step on it, you take damage. And second of all, he has a handful of AOE attacks. And if you're next to him as he jumps away, it'll just damage you no matter what. So fighting him at low health was not an option this time. I eventually learned to just pretend he has cooties and stay as far away from him as possible and wait for him to either slam his arms down or attempt to leap at you and just roll under him and get a few hits in. I try to go for his back legs because it seems to stun lock him pretty easily, but don't get too greedy because like I said, he can jump away and just burn your buns at any time. This is also one of the few bosses that actually gets harder and harder as the fight goes on because by the end of it, he is literally constantly chasing you down, never giving you a single second to breathe or heal. And the stress of it is causing me to go bald and you all know how I feel about bald people. And this was definitely the longest fight so far. It easily took over 20 minutes and it was also very difficult difficult because not only does he have a lot of health, but he also hits like a truck and he has a lot of complicated moves to learn. I would give him 79 out of 84 on difficulty. And immediately after that, we get to do the dragon god fight, which isn't much of a fight. It's more of just hiding behind a bunch of pillars and punching a bunch of concrete and shooting him with these arrow shaped fists until he's dead. And now it's finally time to head towards the most infamous boss in the game, being the man eaters. But first we have to run through this whole area, passing some gargoyles into this scary swamp where I just got to take out these little guys and they don't really put up much of a- <laughs> It doesn't take me too long to make it to the man eaters and holy shit, this was a tough fight. If you don't know, there's actually two enemies and you have about a minute or so to do as much damage to the first man eater as possible before the second one shows up. I foolishly thought I could take out the first one completely as long as I came in under 30% health, but no, I didn't even get close. And honestly, I have no idea how I was actually able to take them both out because I feel like I couldn't even do it again if I tried. Not only do I have to fight two of them at the same time, but they're also constantly trying to push me off this bridge. And every time I got close to the edge, it made my heart go bumpity bumpity bump. That's an irregular heartbeat. Obviously, it's a good idea to take out the one that's already damaged first because fighting them one on one really isn't that difficult, so it's best to get rid of them while you can. But this entire fight had me very anxious, flustered even, perturbed, some might say. Another word that I'm looking up in a thesaurus right now. But I eventually got the job done, and I was excited about the next boss because you have the option to do an online fight. Sadly, the only guy I was able to get was somebody who immediately hit me with a firestorm when I walked into the room, and then I refused to fight him out of respect for myself. But eventually, I caved and we had a fist fight, but the lag was so bad that it was basically impossible. I think he realized this as well, but he left me some parting gifts and disappeared into the ether, never to be seen again. Thank you, kind stranger. Thank you. Since I couldn't do it online, I had to fight the NPC, which was really nothing to ride home about. He's just a regular guy, and I was able to backstab him over and over. After that, I had a nice safe trip on the way to the penetrator which is also my nickname for your dad ha wait what and this was yet another tough fight where my only strategy was to just straight up get good you can't parry him and you can't backstab him so i have to roll through a couple of his attacks and get my punches in and roll away to safety the most frustrating part about this fight is these goddamn hitboxes because there are some points our character models physically cannot get closer and i am still just absolutely whiffing it but for some reason when you do a backhand which is the second punch in your combo it usually lands so it's good to keep that in mind but it doesn't help my frustrations because this would have been 
in much faster if all my punches landed when they were supposed to. And just look at the end of this fight. He literally only has one punch left and all my punches are just missing for absolutely no reason. And yes, I did die and I almost introduced my controller to my TV. And now that the penetrator has been penetrated, I should probably mention that I did have to use this weird sword shaped fist to send these weird wind fists at the boss, but you know. Who, who cares about all that? Nah, it was nothing. It didn't happen. And now it is finally time for the final boss fight, and I wish it was easy, but unfortunately, this man straight up cheats. I originally wanted to come in at under 30% health, and I was doing pretty good with that for a while. But eventually, and I could be wrong, but it seems like the boss glitches out and dashes at me way faster than he's supposed to because he has a move that looks exactly the same except at a normal speed. And whenever he does that, it's basically impossible for me to react in time, and it usually does enough damage to kill me if I have less than 30% health. Luckily, he constantly does a couple of attacks that are punishable, especially the one where he stabs his sword into the ground and you could just run up on him and mollywop him right in the face. The other attack that he does is when he dashes at you at a normal speed and I try to roll into his front and hit him because just like the last boss, if you try to punch him in the back, you just miss half the time for literally no reason, except if you do a backhand or usually a running punch will land, but sometimes he's just not far enough away to actually start sprinting at him. And that's about it for the last fight. You basically just keep doing that with those two attacks, avoid everything else, and this definitely is a contender for the longest fight so far. I'll have to check the footage to see which fight was the longest, and I'll put it up on screen right... Thank you guys so much for watching, especially if you made it this far. I truly appreciate it. And you know, like, subscribe, all that jazz if you want. I don't know. I'm not your mom. Bye.